Greetings to all melanated people all around the world. It's really a joy, it's a blessing. It's a pleasure to be out here in nature, greeting you on this bright sun, shiny day. After it's been raining throughout the week, and I know in some countries it is snowing, but here is the sun coming straight to you. Even as I speak, my words will not return to me void, but it will accomplish that which I've sent it to. And I'm sending sunlight into your heart because we know without the S-U-N there's no life and we know without him there's anything made that was made and we know that all things was for us imagined all things was for us a thought thus the reason why we have to interpret the Bible psychologically because it is not secular history it is not literal but if you want to remain a slave and if you want to have a, a religious mentality or uh, if you want to be a slave to money then you can continue to believe in the Bible literally but if you want to be above and not beneath if you want to be the lender and not the borrower and you want to come into your abundance and live in your abundance you have to get in touch with the inner eye and that is what I want to speak to you about this morning the inner eye and many Christians are so fearful and they get caught up with all the information that is out there that is deceiving them and telling them about the eye that the eye have to be the all-seeing eye of some Lucifer or some devil or some being outside of themselves and they eat up such foolishness but I'm here to help those who been starved for the true world because the Bible says that there would be a time of suffering or starvation or famine for the true world and if they're going to be the true world or the world of truth there must be true messengers or true witnesses bringing a message of experience to you and when one is bringing a message of experience to you it must be tied back with nature because for example, for anyone to disprove me or to prove me wrong, they will have to prove that nature itself is wrong, that the universe is wrong. Because everything that you only ever hear me teach, I can take it and tie it back to nature and show it right back in nature. And show you that the universe can be wrong and that you cannot check the laws of the universe. And that everything in the natural is to teach you the spiritual. And if you have two natural eyes, it's because there's a spiritual eye also and if you can go to bed and have a dream and your two eyes closed and in your dream you're seeing then you have to have another eye an inner eye and if you can go to bed and dream and hear you have to have an inner air, air. and if you can go to bed and have a dream and smell then you have to have an inner nose and if you can go to bed and have a dream and speak then you have an inner mouth and so on and so on therefore there must be an inner man in you so if there's an inner man in you the inner man in you is not a blind eye man it is not a man who can see it is not a man who can speak it is not a man who can hear but when you pray to an idol the idol can hear the idol can't see. The idol can't speak. And many black people and many native people have been praying for idol for too long. They believe in a literal Christ outside of themselves. They believe in a man who existed 2,000 years ago. And many of them disagree with me, but yet they cannot prove me wrong when I say no preacher can disprove this scripture. And I go to St. John chapter 1, verse 3, where it says, All things was made by him, and without him there isn't anything made that was made. And when I ask them the question to tell me of one thing in this world that was made, that was not for us a thought or for us psychological or for us imagine the cancer. Or one thing in this world that ever going to be made that must not for us be imagined, they can't answer. So my brother, my sisters, the Bible admonish you to close your physical eyes, which is referred to as the door and to get into your closet which is the secret place in you 
which is a place of meditation. And it, it, is, it admonishes you, and that is in Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 6 to be specific. It admonishes you that you must not be like the hypocrites who want to be seen and want to be heard. So you go, you go at their home, they want to bow their head and close their eyes and say grace after me, before meal. Point to outside God. And you know something? <laughs> when a Christian owns a vehicle, they write about things on the vehicle. No? Thank you, Jesus. And all kind of things. And think, they, and think of a God outside of themselves that is blessing them to own something that is materialistic. Something that is temporal. And when they go to this idol, not knowing that they are using their creative power unconsciously, that's why they get a certain result. Because they're doing things unconsciously. Okay? Because everybody just walk by the same power of imagining. And when they do not know that, and they give praise to the idol, then, what must we say to those persons who don't go to church, and who don't have that kind of belief, who are millionaires and billionaires, and who are actually the employers of these same people, who have employee mentality? Because they haven't gotten in touch with the inner eye. They haven't gotten in touch with the sixth sense. They haven't gotten in touch with the supernatural eye. And I'm saying to you, God is the eye of man. And I'm speaking from experience. And that is why my brother and my sisters were teaching about Kemet. And all these things. I do not know anything about Kemet. But I know what they're saying is the truth. Because of my experience. I see they have a giant of an eye. And when I have my experience, when I merge with that light and become one with that light, and I awake, it was as if that eye opened. When I was experiencing my awakening, when, when I literally awake within myself, so I do not have to go and study books about Kemet and so on because Kemet wasn't used, basically wasn't basically used to enslave my mind. But the Bible was used to enslave my mind because as a little child, when I was going to school, I was singing all of these Jesus songs. And I was taught to believe in Jesus Christ. And when I look at the image of Jesus Christ, it was a man with blue eyes and blonde hair because my grandmother had a picture. And I used to be staring a lot at that picture and asking myself when and where and how did they get that kind of picture. But I've come to answer the question because the inner eye in me have been activated and not just the inner eye because many people talk about the third eye which is basically the inner eye but I haven't heard much speak about bossing the crown chakra and when you look at the pyramid and the US dollar and you think it's the pyramid that is uncapped or the pyramid that, that, that is not capped no it's when you blue the crown chakra <laughs> and go beyond religion go beyond education go beyond politics and come to the high version of yourself you live above money because that is what brought money money was first imagine that's why I said do not be the slave of money let money be your slave do not, do not be do not let money be your master, you be the master of money. But you have to learn how to use your power consciously. That's the reason why I'm going to leave these little scriptures with you. And I will always use these scriptures, though there are many, many, many scriptures. But I use these simple scriptures. Psalms 4-4. And they're easy to remember. Commune with your own heart up on your bed and be still. So you have to go to bed more consciously. You have to be definite with God. You have to know what you want. And you have to believe in the God within yourself. So you have to pray within because God is within. And you have to see what you want with the inner eye and not the outer eye because the outer eye will tell you that you can't have it. The outer eye will bring you into an illusion. The outer eye will tell you that some people are rich and some people are poor. 
But the inner eye will tell you we are all rich. So you have to see things through the inner eye. So the outer eye would make you get drunk in the flood of the facts you would see around you what you would believe to be facts and get drunk in it instead of being the Noah, the eight. The one who come to um, it's true divinity and rise above all of the distraction. All the things that will tell you that you can't and come into your I am, your true I amness. And you'll be able to say, I am that I am. I am whatever I believe myself to be. As a man thinking in his heart, so is he. And then you have Matthew 6, 6, which says, that you must go into your closet, your secret place, and close the door, close the eyes, and look through the inner eye, see things through the inner eye, and make them manifest. And so also my brother and my sisters, Job 33 verses 14 to 16 tells you too how to go to bed more consciously and how to create your reality. So my brother and my sisters, believe in the inner eye. Trust the inner eye. And use the inner eye. Because the inner eye is the eye that will bring you to your true divinity. The eye of man is God. Because God and man are one. God became man that man may know that he is God. So my brother and my sister, if you want to discover that the creator is in you, that the savior is in you, and you want to give back those who gave you their idol to believe in, to believe in a man 2,000 years ago, and to believe in a historical Christ, and to look to a geographical Israel, <laughs> if you want to give them back such foolishness, you have to learn to believe in the inner eye, your supernatural eye. You have to believe in the sign that this one is bringing to you. Matthew 6, 22 says, If your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. And I'm here with every video bringing the sign to you and telling you that this eye must be awakened in you because this eye represents the awakened imagination and the divine love reproduction is every seed and every species will reproduce after its own kind and if you plant a corner wheat in the ground and it dies it won't abide alone it will bring forth much fruit therefore if those of you who are listening to me would believe what I am saying and put it to work in your life then it must bring forth fruit in your life also and you will prove that what I am saying to you is the truth and you would walk in it from now until you exit this life. So that one say peace. Love you. I'm out.